All right, I've been trying to pull out for the past like five minutes here. This is the biggest downside to the 300D. All right, we're going for it. We're going for it. That's full power. She, uh, she needs to warm up a little bit. Uh, welcome to Diesel Mercedes Life. All right, welcome back. We're um, headed over to my buddy Tyler's house. Um, Tyler owns a, I think it's an 84 or 85 uh, 300 uh, TD wagon. Um, and uh, yeah, again, I, you've seen a lot of my sedan and I uh, just kind of wanted to bring you a, uh, what a wagon looks like, uh, what a normal looking Mercedes W123 wagon looks like how you usually find them and not the pristine fully painted restored ones um there it is all right well let's uh we'll go talk with him and uh we'll give you the full rundown all right cool well, here it is um now this is a uh man this is this is the real battle wagon when it comes down to it this is exactly what you want to see if you respond to a craigslist ad or something just a fairly original high mileage um 300 td wagon i mean that's that's really about as good as it gets here's the owner this is tyler who works at the shop with mike uh at sports car workshops and uh just tell us you know what's the backstory of this thing man if so i i was looking for another car i was driving a, uh, an xj around and I, I just wanted a wagon just wanted a dad wagon and uh, I kind of put the feelers out, nothing really came up. I was actually looking at W124s, and uh, my brother and our boss at the time went to go pick up another car in a neighborhood, drove past, drove past the guy that owns this and also a 300 CD. He's like, oh yeah, I'm paying a guy to come scrap them. Um, you know, you know anyone that wants them? And of course my brother's like, nah, you know, piece of crap, nobody wants it. And our boss was like, well, I'm pretty sure Tyler said he wanted this exact car. So he came to the shop. He's like, hey, man, here's a picture. What do you think? I'm like, let's go right now. Let's, we're going to get it. Engine just kind of sitting in it. He just put an engine in it so the neighbors stopped complaining and the city wouldn't. But it was like the engine just sitting in it. It wasn't Not connected to nothing. It was, it was actually, it was an overheated engine. It kissed a bunch of valves and pistons. He gave me a trailer with two other engines that were also bad and like totes full of crap. So I just put, you know, two and a half bad engines and made one good engine. And, uh, I've been driving it ever since. I got it at, I think, 498-ish thousand miles. I think we're up to like 522 now. Jesus. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it just won't stop. It's never skipped the beat. Cool, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's do a walk around here. All right, let's take a, let's take us around the exterior in all its glory right now. Of uh, again, original, non-restored, unpainted. How you find it sitting in someone's yard, but you still drive a Mercedes wagon? Oh yeah, this thing is. Uh, I mean, it's completely unrestored. You can just see where the paint is just faded, just from existing for 35 years. Good bit of rust. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But the right kind of rust. You know, the kind of like good structural, but not so structural rust. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's patina. It's kind of heavy patina. Yeah. Is what I would. Right. I mean, you can just hit that with some clear coat, right? And just preserve the exact patina that you have yeah, on there. Really, it, I think it adds value if anything. <laughs> Got a couple of beautiful dents. That was my bad. Huh. I mean, you know, just paints just burn through everywhere. This is actually dense from where he closed the, the hood on the engine that wasn't bolted in. Perfect. So since there's, it wasn't bolted in, the engine's, you know, tilted up like that. And, you know, she just took a couple hits. No big deal. Yeah, and again, it, it leaves its mark. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this thing leaks worse than most rovers, honestly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just topped the oil off with the shop's Mr. Oil every once in a while. And... Uh, it doesn't, just doesn't really care. Um, SLS works, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I saw you. Uh, I saw you hauling wood the other day. I, I mean, I, he uses this basically as a truck. I mean, if you open up the back, I mean, this this is going to hurt some of the purists. But I mean, this is what you use these things for. It's it's my pickup truck. I, you know, <laughs> I, I haul my kids in it. I haul wood in it. Furniture, you know, pallets, whatever car parts. I had a Mercedes engine and trans in here one time. I mean, it's. 
And it's crazy because the carpet still looks better than the carpet in my Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, I mean, the way these things are built, I mean, they really just take it. I mean, even, like, the door cards, even after all the kids and abuse and the headliner is not cracked or falling in. I mean, you've got some issues with the speaker things, but, I mean, that's not a real problem, honestly. Yeah, which didn't exist until I tried to, until I changed the, uh, the hatch struts. It was oh, perfectly yeah. fine until I touched it. <laughs> Just got to let it be. Yeah. Um, but let me check out the inside here, too. Driver's side. Driver's side. It's that any theft We just leave it unlocked and people don't look at it. <laughs> well, they, uh, because of all the ice, my lock keeps freezing. Uh, so oh, you're, you're bragging about that your locks work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to... I have to keep it unlocked or else I can't uh, get into it in the morning. <laughs> but yeah, there's the miles. That is a, a functional working odometer, 522.651 just about. Uh, you know, gauges are slightly faded. He's got the same wood popping up that I do. MB Tech seats. I mean, and you're, again, perfect, shiny, used patina. Um, what doesn't work? Uh, the AC doesn't work. Obviously. Yeah, it's which not. is mostly my fault. Um right now the most of the windows don't work but that's just because the fuse box is really dirty it's, i just gotta roll the fuses around every once in a while it's winter you don't need to roll um, them down pretty much nothing that uses vacuum inside the car works i had to block that off so i could shut the car off um other than that i mean it's fully functional the automatic antenna works i mean uh, you know all the lights work all the wipers are fine so the Speakers, basic stuff yeah yeah, the SLS works is really the biggest one. Yeah, that's huge, honestly. As far as as far as cost is concerned, you yeah. know, as far as ownership experience and cost concerned. And it works great. I mean, I, I, I overload this thing all the time. I put hundreds <laughs> of pounds of wood in it, and it just keeps going. Just all right, let's going. let's pop the hood, check out what's going on under the, under the engine. So here's what a 520,000 mile uh, five cylinder diesel engine looks. So is it oh, 617? 617. 617, baby. And again, it, it's, it's, a, it's funny because it looks just like any other 617 that you look at, you know? Yeah. This has been, it's been more or less re-gasketed. So when I, when I rebuilt the engine, I didn't, I didn't really rebuild anything. I just took good pistons, put it in the good block and used the good head. The good SLS head, and uh, and just regasketed. I didn't really, and it, I might not have even put good bearings in it. I think I just found the best bearings and put them together. Um, just balling on a budget as you do. Yeah, and um, I mean, I think the oil was changed a couple of years ago. I believe I changed it. You did. You were the yeah, last person. Yeah. So to I'm the keeping the mental yeah. records in my head for you. This is a this is a core battery out of like an E90 <laughs> that I got. I like. It was a bad battery in an E90 like four years ago. Right. And, you know, 15 degrees, it still starts up great. I have no idea how. <laughs> now that I've said that, it's probably going to be dead right now. But um, I, this thing, you know, another testament to, like, just how ridiculously bulletproof this car is. And then uh, cruise control delete? No, cruise control is fully functional. Fully functional? Oh, Absolutely. man. You got me on that one. Yeah, it never gets used because I pretty much just drive it from the shop. <laughs> Um, I mean, I've driven it down to Charlotte, North Carolina. I've driven it to the beach, the mountains. I've driven it to DC. I mean, I've taken it for a five hour long road trip. You know, I'm not keeping up with traffic, but it just, you know, I get 27 miles per gallon. It's an unlimited tank. Yeah, and it's phenomenal. <laughs> you filled up, what, once every two, <clears throat> two months or something, maybe? Maybe. I just filled up the other day because <clears throat> it starts to die when you take corners too hard. Oh, uh, yeah. Dying, yeah. Works uh, better than the fuel gauge. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the fuel gauge used to be uh, pretty good, but now now once it gets down to about a quarter of a tank, that's that's empty. I found out the hard way. Oh, well, cool. Let's, uh, let's fire this thing up. Are you driven it today? No. Yeah. Alright, so that's a that's a that's a cold start there, honestly. Yeah, that's exactly where mine whatever mount that is, mine's gone as well. Yeah, the air cleaner mount. I can hear it rattling around when I
All right, functions and driving dynamics. Um, interior, it's almost identical to uh, the sedan. You've got a couple different buttons here for the rear hatch, wipers and whatnot, but everything else is pretty much the same. I like the fact that you've got the, is that a cr the crank sunroof, I'm assuming? Oh no, it's, it just unlocks and slides, slides back. Slides back, wow, that's way better than the electric yeah. one. Um, but yeah, you know, cushy MB Tech seats, you know, it, no major kind of clunks or rattles or anything. Again, 520,000 miles and still going strong. Windshield could use some love, but that's not really a, a functional part of the automobile, honestly. Yeah, it's low priority. But I think the windshields are still out. Like you can still get a new windshield. You know, you're not you're not stuck with buying some used, you know, pitted windshield. And I'm assuming this is the original windshield. It's still got the sticker on it. Yeah, I believe it is but takes off, shifts smooth. You know, obviously it's all vacuum actuated, so you've got a little bit of a, of a jolt, but that's kind of healthy for a Mercedes transmission, honestly. Gauges are functioning. These things never get up to temp, so it's not really anything that you want to stare at, honestly. No, I've, I've never had an overheating problem with <laughs> this car. You know, this car is always run, what I would say is probably too cool. Yeah. Um, always been uh, just takes forever to heat up especially in the winter uh, but once it gets going that's fine got good enough heat yeah but like it's a it's a different like it is a different way of worn in I mean it, it's you know when people say ah you know, 100,000 miles just getting worn in no this is 500,000 miles and yeah there's been some engine work and stuff but there's not many other automobiles that can do this so that's why I wanted to use this example it's not like it has 200,000 miles or 250,000 miles it's 500,000 miles so that's really the biggest kind of a test to this brand um, and you know you know the, the point of this video is to just kind of go over you know what these things can do for like a real life example of a W123 and not one that's been pampered and babied and repainted and kind of gone through, you know, in the Magnus's recent video, he went over, you know, the next big thing. And, and my theory is it's not the next big thing. This has been a, a kind of coveted and loved uh, estate wagon since it pretty much came out. You know, he did nail one thing. There's two types of owners. There's the, the, the new hipster dudes that find these things and love them and you know, it's a part of their image, which is cool. I, that's half why reason of some of my cars. But then there's also the original owners that have had them since day one and will never sell them. And that's kind of the two, uh, it's really, they don't want to categorize people too much, but as far as Mercedes ownership's concerned, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> I feel attacked. Yeah, no, it's okay. I am attacking myself. I'm not wearing a beanie or anything, but I, you know, I've had a coffee once in my life. But uh, but no, again, you know this is this is what this th these things are all about. You get them, in, you putz around town. You can work on them. You know they're they're fairly straightforward. Besides the vacuum issues, you know I think most people can uh, can do a lot of their own diag. You know it's not like you're just going into uh, crazy injector pumps or OBD sensors or codes or anything like that. I mean, who knows? I'm sure half the lights in the dash don't work anyway, so it's probably for the better. But uh, yeah, and I've actually, I've driven this one as well. I think it might even be quicker than mine. I mean, he just probably drives it more. Uh, it's probably in, a, in better tune as far as things are concerned. But uh, you know, this one, it definitely, it definitely scoots. You know, and, and that's the other, that's the last part I wanted to make before we, uh, we sign off here is, you know, in, in the video, Magnus is going around like, oh, you know, how does it handle? You know, and they're like, oh, is it good on the mountain roads? Blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, it's not what this thing's about. This is, this is more of a cruiser than, uh, than a Crown Vic or something like that. You know, it, it's, it's meant to be cushy. It's meant to be reliable and smooth and just kind of float along, which, you know, even after this amount of miles, you can still do. So, yeah, these things are, uh, these things are pretty sweet. Um, there's just something about a wagon. You know, they always have inherent value. And uh, I think they're always going to be cool. They always were cool. So that's kind of my take on that. Um, if you want to see more content Mercedes wise, I've been jumping back and forth with all different brands. Uh, we'll be, we might do some more on this wagon later, do some type of comparison between it and, uh, and my, my diesel. Um, so feel free to subscribe in the bottom, uh, and leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts and if I sum things up correctly or, uh, or I'm missing the point. So, uh, this is Tyler. You'll see him in a bunch of other videos. You can follow him on Instagram at, uh, Tyler, uh, W123. Um, 
He's, uh, he's a good uh, a good source for a lot of Mercedes and other old junk like we deal with uh, content. So feel free to, to stick around.